G'day, welcome back to Project Brewpeg, the story of a sunken fishing trawler converting into a global expedition and research boat. This week we're getting a bit cheeky, we are literally putting cheeks on our big wings. Over the last couple of weeks, Dame's been getting the hinge cheeks ready to weld into the stabiliser wings. Are you holding it up? I am, just in case it falls over. Waiting in the car while Dane picked something up, one of the locals kept an eye on me. So, surprise time, we've got our first hinge coming through. So I'll show you what we've got. Just clamped up, measured up and where it needs to sit. So you can see that bevel, it basically sits there, you've got quite a gap that needs to be filled up with weld. Um, what the plan is, is basically to cut the, um, the, the equivalent side off, so we'll cut across here. We'll cut that at a 45 and we'll fill that whole thing up with weld. But for now we're just going to tack it in and then get it all lined up straight and lovely. And that'll allow us to measure the one that needs to sit over there. The reason I'm just tacking it down the bottom is because I don't quite trust that it's straight that way. So I want to be able to adjust it. Tacking it at the bottom allows me to just give it a slight tweak with a hammer if I need to. So that's the first sign of our pin arrangement. So the plan will be to essentially create a pipe that we weld onto the end of the arm and that pipe will slide through that, um, that pin there, that inch and a quarter stainless pin. So I was just thinking when I weld this in I need to make sure that the pin is free the whole time. So rather than do a big weld and then warp the plate or something like that and jam that pin up, I need to do a small weld, make sure the pin is spinning and then just sort of keep swapping over to make sure that we're going to have the best possible um, alignment of those two plates because if that pin jams up it sort of screws the whole process up. What that means in practicality at the moment you can see that that pin spins beautifully if I do that 
I need to maintain that all the way through the weld. So I need to um, weld it in a way that's not going to basically warp that steel. So I need to weld on one side and then straight away weld on the other side so that it's an even um, tension on both sides and it doesn't try to pull, you know, left or right sort of thing. So if it's out, oh look at that, beautiful, that's what we want. Don't necessarily want all that slag on the pin though. Yeah, we'll get it off like that. Cool. I think we're on the right path. And that's the top of the Uber bevel. So now that we've got a massive gouge cut out of both sides, we can fill that up with weld and we'll have a really strong bond. I just wanted to show you um, what happens on a bad weld. So I've just um, ground that out. I'm going to do a little bit more, just get rid of those little... You can see the little bubbles? Uh, that's part of what makes up the bad weld. Uh, so if we'd left that, it's just not strong. So this is when the nitrogen um, from the atmosphere gets inside the weld. Yeah, yeah. porosity. Um, that's what that's called. So yeah, so I'll grind the rest of that out. I just want to show you before I took it right down. Um, and, and what happened was that we didn't have the gas on. So uh, it happens sometimes, you forget. So we've done what's essentially called our root run. So you can sort of see that weld in the top there. Focus. There we go. So that's root weld one. And that's root weld number two. Jeez, these are a bit, they're a bit gorgeous, are they? They're lovely, aren't they? Yeah, well done. Yeah. So we're going to basically go through and do that down each side around the bottom and then back up. And then we'll fill this top completely with weld. So that's why we did such a big bevel on there, so that we can put a massive amount of liquid metal in there and just bond everything together. So we've got a fair bit of progress on those wings today. Um, it's time for stop. We're going to have a coffee, give our family in NZ a call. <laughs> Hi Brad and Judy. Um, they're on lockdown at the moment, so New Zealand went pretty hardcore early on to deal with the, um, the coronavirus. Um, yeah, we're catching up with them pretty regularly on video chat. And Jess is on the phone most days to them, so. I threw this regulator out a while back. This is the regulator off Nugget, um, my old welder. And I thought that the new welder would come with an awesome regulator and everything. It did come with a good regulator. However, that regulator is dying left, right and centre. So I'm going to see if I can rejig any of Nugget's old regulator into something usable. This has been kept on the ground in the mud. So obviously pristine conditions. But let's have a go at fixing it. It uses quite a different setup than the current um, regulator it's got rather than like a needle and seat it's got a needle and seat but if you have a look at that focus there you go come on focus you can do it you can do it there we go needle and seat but it's totally different and it's like a ceramic I think maybe it's a metal I'm not sure it's quite a bit nicer than the one that came with the Unimig so we'll roll with that Still feels nice, everything's going together smoothly and lovely. I guess we'll know if I plug it all in and it fires rust out the end. Probably a good sign something's up. Let's give it a shot. Moment of truth. Right. Bottle on. Lovely. Alright. Close. We have a regulator.
So you can see they're coming along quite nice. Um, got a couple of runs down the middle there, or well, three runs, so one down the down the root run and then we've got two capping runs. We'll keep going, I'll probably put another three on each of those. And we've got one down either side. I'm gonna beef those up more, put probably a good three on either of those as well. Um, and then underneath, the thing I was most sort of wanting to make sure happened, lovely free pin. So that's really critical that, that pin stays free. And I think it's worked out all right with the welding. Nothing's warped too much so far. And that regulator seems to be working out sweet. Um, once I obviously had it blow it out on everything with the pipe off it, it um, was running good. It's a nice wee regulator, eh? I just assumed that the new one would be better, but no, it was wrong. The old one's awesome compared to the new one. So we've got a bit of rain coming in. Let's see if we can get this welding done before that stuff starts to delay our work. So that's ever so slightly too heavy to weld in. Okay, the next step, now that we've got these two cheeks welded in and they're parallel, the pin's turning nice and all that, we need to figure out how we're gonna do bracing. So I need to do internal bracing that's gonna act like a doubler underneath the skin of the wing. Um, we're also gonna do one on the top and the bottom plate, but this is the internal strengthening that we need to figure out. So for that, I'm gonna get Jess down to decide what she wants in terms of strengthening inside these wings. So now that we've got the heavy weather welding sorted, I just need to grind the tops of those down so they're below the level of the skin. Um, when we put the skin on, obviously if that's sticking up as a high spot, it's gonna leave a dimple in the wing, so we need to sort that out. I'll get Jess down now. Um, we need to both be pretty happy with the internal structure of these wings, so we're gonna go to some pretty remote and rough places, so we don't want anything to let go. My plan is go through and figure out what our pros and cons and challenges are and stuff, and we'll figure out how we're gonna do our internal beefing and strengthening. What are you thinking? I don't know if you've got enough weld on. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Yeah. I think they'll be right, eh? Yeah. i got to file these down so they're lower than that surface yeah, right. on both of them. Sorry. <laughs> I've got to file those down so they're lower than the surface so we can skin it. Mm. But um, they're just about ready to go, I think. I was thinking about bracing, but... Chris has doublers on the outside of the skin, right? On the top and the bottom. Yeah, he does. Yeah. And he's spreading the load that way. Yeah. So we have to spread the load, but you don't want to have that interference with flow. Yeah. And that makes sense. We've got, like you were saying before, you, we've got the opportunity to do it on the in yeah. inside of it. Yeah. So why why not do that? Yeah. Um, but but the flip side is that his his beams here, I don't think are as thick as these. Mm. Like these are 16 mil, and that's 20 mil, and then that's 10 mil. So. But you've still got the six six mil skin, yeah. and that's what'll flex. That is that's what I mean. I, yeah. I know this will give it strength, but that's what'll give, right? Well, well, so what you're saying is if you put these will transfer in, the load to these. Yeah. So it, the load is spread so, lengthwise. Yeah. Um, if you if you put the stringers here, you're spreading it that way too, right? Yep, yeah. Yeah. yeah which is true. what you you ideally would like. Well, his his are flat because they're a doubler on the skin. Mm. So. But it's still spreading the load in the same direction. Oh, 100%, isn't it? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. 100%. Mm. Yeah. I just my question, I suppose, is is this strong enough without a doubler? Because I think this is thicker than what a lot of the guys are using. And you've got like this bracing now. Like yeah, it's... like this is 46 mil of steel. <laughs> you know what I think is going to happen? What? They'll be standing and everything will have collapsed around us. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I think. If that happens, I've built it correctly. Okay, so my, my, my concern <laughs> yeah. is the skin, the, the um, spreading the load on the skin, yep. not, on, not on the point. Right. No, no, I would rather have strengthen the the skin yep. across that way. Like okay, so saying, put a vertical in. Yeah. I, I okay. Would, because the only the only issue I see, I think this is plenty strong and this is like an incredible, yep. really good booty welds. Yep. I mean, it's all good, but I'm just thinking this, it's this direction, like you were saying, and, and that's why he's putting doublers in, right? Well, because well, partly, mainly the doublers are so that so that the load that's in this one little bit here gets is, spread out over is a yet, big yeah, area. Through some, and he's some got it big, top and bottom. Yeah. But I, I, th I do think we probably could get away with it. But like you, I think maybe we're on the side of caution and just put, you know, it doesn't have to be ginormous. I know, it's, the, it's that unknown, eh? It like, is, it is. And we've got the opportunity right now. All right, well, I was thinking go from this beam here yep. across, link those across there, and then go from there down to the front. Any engineers, could you come through the camera <laughs> and tell us what to do? <laughs> that would be really good. <laughs> I think 
Have you on the side of caution, like you want to? Alright, throw I'll, I'll agree, yeah. we'll throw in some steel. Okay. Um, and then, you know, we'll throw them on the boat and hopefully at some point, throw the boat in the water and then try them out. <laughs> Sometime this year, these wings will bolt to the boat. I hope so. Alright. Well, what I would like is it to touch the six, not, not, not to be above the oh, six. It's going to fully weld it. Yeah, great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. If I use the 20 mil, we've got a, a slab across there that I can weld the skin onto. I'll drill a hole in the skin and I can plug weld the skin onto it. This is the okay. stuff here. Throw <laughs> a little bit in. That's not going to bend. And if that bends, the rest of the boat's snapped. <laughs> Someone, um, someone did, who was it who said, was it Trevor? Was it you Trevor? I can't remember. Someone said you could stand on them, like go out onto the wings while they're down oh, and, yeah, no. and sit on them. Who was that? A viewer. It was, um, they, what they, it was something like they called it a lawn trap for scientists or something. <laughs> it was their handle? It was a swim platform or something where they could like... Yes, it, maybe yeah. it's a new swim platform. Yeah, I yeah. thought that was a really good idea. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to actually try that when we were in yeah, shallow yeah. waters. Yeah, yeah, I think it'd be funny. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Have a little tea party out on the wing. It certainly makes keel hauling harder. <laughs> it does. All right, cool. I'll, okay. I'll do that now then. I'll just throw some steel at it. That's easy enough. Cool. Thank you. All right. Thanks, guys. It's quite nice having a built-in engineer. I want to say thanks to Rick, Craig, Gruntman and Eric. On the comment section of the last video, they had some really good feedback about the vulnerability of our wings in heavy ice conditions. We're not sure what our solution is going to be to this yet, but I just want to say thanks for the feedback that they gave because it's really going to help build that solution on Brewpeg. You got ice like summer sky If it's my good kill I die and now it starts to rain, so let's enjoy it.